rending apart the sound barrier as we tear through the stratosphere on a direct course to smash straight through the spires to the sump. We are the twin turbine dropship of Vox Free Innsmouth 665.66 UHMR Chemrat Radio. Acid rain has burdened the underhive for the last week, clinging to the hab stacks of the outer district. So listeners, if you want to stay burn free and as dry as possible, stick to the pipeways or take out your umbrellas. It's Ellis, nothing like that chocolate Ellis, rain. A. A. <laughs> is acid rain the uh, the adult version of chocolate rain? <laughs> I, I thought that was oh a my god! Oh, instead of being burned, you just start fucking tripping while walking around. <laughs> that would be oh, fun. that'd be fucking. You weird. just hear Taze on Day's deep voice everywhere you go, <laughs> like Morgan like, Freeman, but for like much cheaper. It's like that scene in SLC Punk where he runs across the fucking dude's front lawn and the sprinklers come on and the acid tabs are in his pocket and he starts fucking tripping. <laughs> Actually, I could totally picture that happening on, like, really industrialized Warhammer worlds, where, like, the acid rain would probably do shit like that. You never know what it's gonna turn into when it, all those... Especially, like, a pharmace- like, a pharmaceutical a or medical- Medicaid world. Oh, dude, a Medicaid world that's just focused purely on It's making- called Zinch's Wet Dreams, what that place is. I mean, it's it's also Slanesh's wet dream. A little bit. So in murder ball news, the sump vat rat catchers have made it to the playoffs this season, looking to take on the Glacial Marauders next week for a chance at the top spot here in Innsmouth Hive. Let's go, Marauders! Whoever comes out on top will play against the winning teams from the other hives in murder ball finals that start sometime early next month. Um, for those who are of a gambling persuasion, uh, Glacial Marauders are going to be taking a little bit of a submarine this round. Just uh, put your money on the zump fat. They're going to they're gonna take the hit for it. I mean, they're going to go do very well, I'm sure. <laughs> Allegedly, we're, they're going to they're gonna do well this game. Got it. <laughs> we're writing out the worst of all of that here at Mama Cat's Noodle House, getting our grub on with her new spicy Glide Gator Sausages. I'll tell you what, boys, nothing tastes quite as sweet as something that's capable of taking a bite out of you, too, as it glides on by. That's why I call her mommy before she feeds me. Maybe she poisoned it. Maybe I got an extra serving. It's complexity upon complexity there. As always, I am your ghoulish host with the most. Unrestrained willingness to use plasma to solve any of my problems. Goblin King. Endlessly extolling the virtues of the humble but quite effective Laz rifle in some vain hope I won't blow us all away is our crack shot with a hot shot Kev. Pew 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 <laughs> And his majesty deeming to join us all the way up from the hollowed halls of the uppers, although he did bring a lot more of this sort of tasty watery stuff. Our special guest Ickbard. Man, you read that script I sent you so well. Here, here, take a take a shot. Here you go, buddy. I, Just I get more water. You do, yeah, you do. Here you go. So, welcome to episode fifty-six of Under the Hive of Madness, Heroes of Forty K, Commissar Yarick. Much like we did with our Planet Spotlight episodes, all on Armageddon, we are going to be doing hero-focused deep dives as well covering their lore in more detail and focused episodes. While we're starting with Yarrick, that is mostly because of his connection to the world of Armageddon. As we cover more planets, we will most likely choose heroes that have some connection to them as well. To be clear, though, we are looking at all of these heroes more as they are paragons of their own factions, not because they are paragons of virtue to humanity or xenosanity. All of the factions or races in 40K are pretty much the bad guys all the time. We also don't want to draw a line in the sand and claim that only the Imperium has a claim to the title of hero. Future episodes, we will look at covering Gazgul, Prince Uriel, Vect himself, Old One-Eye, and many, many more. I'm I'm looking forward to covering Vect because that's going to be a horrible episode. (laughs) Are you ready to do the anthology of Abaddon? That they, you think, I, uh, you at think some point, Casperax will get one too? Hell yeah, man. I can't wait for one Olianus Pius. It's basically going to be talking about the Horus Heresy and how he fucking died. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting if we ever do a Kyphus Kane one. Yeah, he'll probably get one. That's a drinking game at that point, right? You know, 
we'll have to do the three. Yarick, Gaunt, Kane. Then you'll have to listen to them all in a row and try not to get too hammered. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, to kick it off with Sebastian Yarick. Kev, do you want to read our quote there? Yeah. All right. How, how should I how should I flavor this? Well, this is Yarick, so how would Yarick sound? Every- I actually kind of, I actually kinda of like how should I flavor this? I do declare do you, do you, this do you Armageddon declare summer us- is giving me the vapors. <laughs> Southern gentleman Yark. You know, Just I like it. Fucking general Lee it up, sure. <laughs> oh man, this this is actually gonna be really fun to to try. I haven't, I haven't done a Southern Gentleman in a while because most people do find it offensive. <laughs> Why? Well, because it does suggest that I happen to own other people as well as property. <laughs> Man, that is quite, that's quite the fucking reach. I can get the top shelf of the cookie jar with that one. I mean, I, I also crack terrible, terrible jokes while I'm using said voice. So, you know, it could be the context. But... <laughs> oh, that sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Well, why else would I bring out this fine southern gentleman voice? I don't know, to, to sound like Elton Brown. The who? Always Never mind, don't that. don't talk about no city slickers with me, boy. <laughs> All right. I don't know why I'm so amused by Yarek being a southern <laughs> gentleman, but I am. I think it's because I don't picture anybody in the 40K universe not sounding like a stuffy British person. Right, exactly, and that's why I just thought it was so like funny that I used it for that the asking part. But it was it works. I think it'd be great, cowboy. There needs to be some rednecks of forty k that aren't orcs. Yeah, it's called Votan. I mean, you we could heal Billy Votan. I'll, I'll explain it later. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, they went and lived off into hills. And the inbred. Okay, bunch. we're going into it. So they're a biker <laughs> gang, and biker gangs tend to, at least the ones where I grew up in, hit a lot of Odinism and a lot of Norse um, religion into there. So the fact that Votan is Wotan, which is Odin, oh, we yeah. can then have our Americanized biker gang, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, works for me. Alrighty. Let's get this speech underway. <laughs> Heroes of Armageddon. You have withstood the evil savagery of the orcs, and they have nothing left for you to fear. So raise high the black banners of vengeance. Now it is our time. That was the last transmission from Commissar Yarek prior to departing with the Black Templar's crusade to hunt down Gazgul Mag Arak Thraka. And pretty much the best voice to read that in. (laughs) I think I'm going to have to use that voice more. Y- Yarik is now canon, uh, a general from the south. <laughs> <laughs> so Sebastian, hero of Hades Hive, Yarik is a commissar of the Officio Perfectus, made famous for his involvement in the Second and Third Wars of Armageddon. Much of his renown came from his battles against the forces of the orc warlord Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka during the Second and Third Wars that we just mentioned. Yarek, however, was born on Taos III under the name of Sebastian Varden. However, the young Yarek was orphaned when he was seven standard years old. He was then raised by his maternal grandfather in a small community near New Caden Hive. This is where he spent the next three years under the loving but harsh tutelage of the old Astra Militarum veteran sergeant, learning how to fight, lay traps, and stay quiet and hidden. When an orc invasion descended on his homeworld, young Yarik survived alone, hiding from the greenskins even while waging his own tiny guerrilla resistance. He would lay traps, killed Gretchen, foraging and general doing and generally doing everything he could to survive using all the tactics and tricks that his grandfather had taught him. When an Imperial Relief Flotilla finally arrived in orbit over Taos III, Several months into the conflict, the Astra Militarum regiments were deployed. It was one squad on patrol that managed to pick up the lone 10 year old boy who had by this time taken the surname of his grandfather, Yarik. From here, he was placed in the Imperium's Scola Progenium to be in- educated and indoctrinated as a commissar. 
It was around this time that he learned the orc language from a human raider who was once who had once been a prisoner of the Greenskins while fighting the orcs during a walk on the world of Varun. From this point on, he extensively studied the orc mind and is considered one of the Imperium's leading experts on orc physiology and culture. His years with the Imperial Guard were eventful ones, as he served in over a dozen war zones and with regiments from Necromunda, Luther, McIntyre, and Armageddon. His final assignment before retirement was to run the recruitment program for the rebuilding of the 4th Armageddon Steel Legion Regiment on Armageddon. Yarrick was old and scheduled to retire on the day that the Greenskin invasion began. I uh, I actually didn't know that he was old and essentially retiring when the Second War of Armageddon started. Yeah, he was an old man when he like became Yarrick. Who he is? Famous. Yeah, like no, most of his stories. Weapon in space is was, basically what I'm yeah. hearing. Like he had he had his like childhood story, you know, and that was how he he you know managed to survive childhood and had at least some badassery in him and then he was basically no nobody forever and then when some important shit went down at the end of his career that's why the joke is that he's the old man because he's just been the old man forever that's right. interesting because i've only seen like art of him looking like sure kind of grizzled looking but everyone looks pretty grizzled in the guard i never thought of him as that old guy that kind of knows what's going on. So if, I think if we assume a like general, you know, if we refer to our own world and we look at like when, you know, army officers retire, you got to think retirement is happening between like 50 for an officer. Anyway, yeah. I would say that retirement is happening between 50 and 65. It's going to be 50 if, you know, you kind of just played the field and were level and did your 25 and got out. So you, your pension is the highest that, that it can be. And then you're going to reintegrate into civilian life. It's going to be closer to 65 if you're highly decorated or if you got higher appointments or higher commissions. So obviously Yarek is probably like 65 to 70 human standard would be my guess when the orcs invade during the second war of Armageddon. So he's well, is this an old or man. Is this peacetime or active time where this type of thing would take place? Because this is like double overtime active time in the Warhammer comparison. That's true. But in the Warhammer world, it's also generally assumed that if you live to old age, you're in the like 70s to 180s range. It, yeah, people age in Warhammer, in Warhammer is really is hard to different. track down. Yeah. Also, the strength of humans in general is kind of different in warhammer than modern humans it seems like humanity is definitely in a better place genetically overall right like the when human the body is, is much, six right the average height is six feet tall like the muscle build is much larger like they're talking about people who haven't been like properly fed meals doing manual labor like right you wouldn't last very long doing that yet that's how the economy runs in many cases like, there's no way that could happen if with human bodies being in the current, like, you know, not in any effective way. And I feel like from some of the the novelization, anyway, they kind of refer to the commissars as, like, graduating from the officio perfecta at, like, 2025. So you got to yes. think. and they serve as a junior commissar as well. Right. So you got to think so if you're in the junior. Time, then... Yeah. Yeah, so you got to think. I mean, I I would guess that Yarick was probably sixty. I would say sixty five to seventy when the first when the second war of Armageddon started. That would All be right. my guess. Sixty five to seventy. We'll split the difference. He was sixty nine years old. There you go. Yep. He wasn't four hundred and twenty sixty nine four hundred and twenty years and sixty nine months old. Only when he died. Oh, okay, got it. So as the Spoilers. second war of Armageddon began, Yarrick was banished to the Hades Hive by Hermann von Straub, the planetary governor of Armageddon. This was because he understood the threat that the orcs posed. Yarrick had gone around von Straub and ordered the planet's astropaths to send a message to the Imperium seeking help. Von Straub wanted to deal with it himself. He had a bunch of old virus bombs that he thought he was going to be able to use to turn the war really quick. Um, most of them didn't go off or they went off in the wrong places, like in their launchers inside Von Straub's forces. For his part, Von Straub has been described as the greatest waste of flesh and bone born in the last 500 years by the Precept 
by the pr- Princeps Prime Kurtziv Manaheim of the Legio Metallica Titan Legion. God bless you. I know, right? While Yarig held the Hades Hive, the rest of Armageddon fell bit by bit under von Straub's incompetent leadership, finally being halted when the orcs reached Hades Hive itself. Here, Commissar Yarik commanded the defending forces, inspiring them to fight like they were possessed. The Imperial defenses were so vicious that eventually Gazgul himself joined the attack, leading his forces from the front. As legends tell, it was Yarik's acts of stoic defiance that would save the planet. In Yarik, Gazgul finally saw a worthy opponent, a strategist of great cunning against whom he could test his brutal fury. Hades Hive became a personal battlefield between these two warriors. Because of this, Gazgul sent the majority of his forces towards Hades Hive and even joined the battle himself, determined to crush Commissar Yarik to dust beneath the might of his power claw. Commissar Yorick organized the defenses of Hades Hive like this. First, he welded shut the great blast portals of the Hive City while also negotiating treaties with the many Hive gangs of Hades under Hive. That's one of the things that I think he did that was kind of cool. Is he yeah. went into, and made de- he's like, all right, we need like more people, and this has to all be like hand like is this isn't like a the army fights and then the civilians all get murdered afterwards. This is we all fight now, right? And, <laughs> and make it happen, or we all die. It's interesting because isn't the recruitment process for the Armageddon Steel Legion? It's literally we get the gang members and then they get interned, and hence why yeah. Yeah, I think they kind of have that it. wink and a nod. That's why they're the they're the regiment that has the drive by shooting orders right now. Yep. <laughs> wow. Seriously, I, that is I got, all GW. I know, I know. I know. Yeah, it's just one of those things that makes me go, "Oh God, <laughs> did we go that we went there?" So yeah, Ma- Yarik, I didn't go there. GW did. <laughs> Yarick managed to pull together a ragtag army to defend Hades while the orcs and their gargants laid siege to the hive with their biggest guns. The people of Hades survived on rats and roaches and on reduced or non-existent power. However, few speak of this time other than to praise Commissar Yarik's actions. Warboss Gazgul himself took command to coordinate the attack on Hades' hive, trying every strategy he could think of before finally claiming that the whisperings of the orc deities, Gork and Mork, led to a revelation. He dropped elite commandos onto the spires of the hive, built great siege weapons, and even retrofitted gargants with earth-moving devices. But it was still all held at bay. With every strategy Glasgow tried, Commissar Yarek found a defense. He had the Hades maintenance crews go into the hive city's ventilation shafts armed with a bolt pistol and knife and attack the arc commandos as they came down. Not one of the commandos sent in survived. He even used the Hive's transportation infrastructure to counter faint attacks, and suicide bombers were sent out to successfully destroy some of the huge siege weaponry the orcs had built. During the first assault on Hades' Hive that took place during the Second War of Armageddon, the orc warlord Olgahard, one of Gazgul's most prominent underlings, drove the bulk of his forces towards Yorick's position eventually engaging the elderly commissar in single combat. Oligarch quickly used his power claw to sever Yarik's right arm at the elbow. Man, that's one hell of a flesh wound. There we go, right? Yeah, most people would just pass out. However, the warlord's victory was cut short as Yarik fought through the pain and shock that no other mortal man could and beheaded the warlord who had lowered his guard, believing that the aged Umi was finished. Yarik was then said to have picked up and brandished the orc warlord's power claw, which inspired fear in the orcs while prompting the Imperial defenders to surge forward against the aliens. Yarik would eventually have this power claw attached in place of his missing right arm. Hammer Bolter does a pretty good job of, of that scene specifically where he, he does that. Oh, and cool. The, the quote that he says um, at, when, after he does it, he cuts off the head and cuts off the arm and he holds up the arm just like in that picture that he flashed and he says uh like for like which part will you give me as any like nice. that yells that at the orcs that's awesome yeah, it's dude. great big yeah. general patent energy oh yeah 
So legend Big has it. energy. Right. <laughs> so legend has it that only after the orc assault was routed from Hades Hive did Yarek allow himself the luxury of passing out. Amongst the orcs, rumors and news of Yarek's actions spread like wildfire, and whenever and wherever Yarek fought, the great green skinned Xenos would flee in terror. Yarek exploded this to the fullest, having Oligurk's claw modified Olkhard's claw modified to suit him as a prosthetic limb. When Yarek later lost an eye in a vicious firefight, he ensured it was replaced with a powerful laser bionic called the Bale Eye, based on the fact that the orcs had rumors and legends about Yarek's evil eye. This bionic was capable of firing a laser at short range, which, like a las pistol, could kill anything in within that short range, playing even deeper into the orcs' fears. Oh, Baelai, what can kill you with just a glance? For six solar months following this first assault, the defenders of Hades Hive held out against further attacks. While recollections from the siege varies, almost all consider that Yarek was the man who made it all possible. He was the one who held the defenders together, the one who brought them back from the brink of defeat countless times, and the one who, whose belief gave others the strength to go on. The time... He bought the Hades Hive, tying up a vast portion of the Orc Wog and distracting Gazgul himself from his ultimate goals made all the difference, allowing time for the reinforcing Imperial Guard and Space Marines to muster and launch a counterattack against the Orcs on Armageddon itself. Though the casualties were horrific, Yarek managed to distract Gaz and continue to hold out, giving the Guard and the Blood Angels chapter of the Adaptus Astartes time to outflank and destroy the mo- majority of Gazgul's hordes. When Imperial Relief Forces finally made it north to Hades Hive, including forces from all three of the Space Marine chapters that are derived on planet, they found that unfortunately the Hive was completely overrun by orcs. Only a few of the humans within Hades would actually survive, including the battered Commissar Yarek, who was found surrounded by dozens of orc corpses. Furious at his defeat, Gazgul retreated from the system, ending the Second War of Armageddon. Yarek's courage and tenacity in the conflict have become inspirational to his followers. His actions carried his ragtag force through the hardships untold to an eventual victory. Yarek was one of but a few survivors of the final battle of Hades Hive, and it took many solar months for him to recover from his injuries that he sustained during that assault after which he accepted a nominal retirement along with a training post on Armageddon. However, the knowledge that an orc like Gazgul was still at large proved too much of a distraction, and in just a few months he reported back to active duty, vowing that he would not rest until the, the day Gazgul mag Uruk thraka was hunted down and killed. So again, dude goes through all this fucking shit, <laughs> retires, <laughs> and then is like, nah, just kidding, I'm back. Just kidding. Can't retire. Job's not done yet. <laughs> Retirement? No, that was just a prank, bro. And I like how he, he didn't retire. He retired along with taking a training post on Armageddon. So he was still training people to be soldiers the entire time he was retired. So one question I do have is, given the history of Olinar slash Armageddon, given what the Grey Knights were going to do to everyone and were doing to everyone, how did he survive? So that was the first war of Armageddon. So you're so there's a couple of things you're mis, you're you're mixing up. The first war of Armageddon was against Angron and the World Eaters. Um, Correct. And the Grey Knights came in and fucking murdered the fuck out of everybody. So nobody remembered it happened. The Grey Knights weren't really that involved with the second. Yeah. Um. But the, oh, the other thing that you're talking about is that Armageddon is in fact Olinor. Um. And a lot of people don't know it. A lot of people in the Imperium don't know it. Only a couple of people in the Mechanicus know it. And the Mechanicus pulled that fast one because of the resource-rich deposits on Olinor. And the way that they fixed it, it, yeah, was they went layer by layer destroying on an atomic level any orc spores they found. The problem is, in air quotes, that the orcs still remember that Armageddon is Olinor. So the orcs keep coming back to Armageddon because they want their planet back. It's kind of like their mecha. Yes. Yeah. That's why Gaz keeps attacking it. Like, Gaz doesn't keep attacking it for any reason other than he wants his planet back. 
Yeah, he knows it's Olinor. It's where the prime orc, the last time the beast rose, was on Olinor. That's really cool. So the next section of Yarik's tale is Golgotha, the shit demon. You guys have seen, everybody's seen Dogma, right? Yeah. When they get it's attacked. It's been so long. They get attacked by the Golgotha, it's the shit demon. <laughs> I don't know what Golgotha actually means, but I can't see that word without thinking about fucking the movie Dogma. Well, if, if Yarik was stuck there, that means he's in the shit demon. That's right. So soon Yarik attempted to follow through on this oath and set off in pursuit of his nemesis in a game of cat and mouse that lasted for nearly 10 years. Gazgul fled before Yarik, protecting what remained of his forces, only committing to turn and face him in rearguard actions when necessary. Eventually, Yarik attempted to break this deadlock by forcing his opponent down onto the once imperial planet of Golgotha. While at first it appeared that Yarik would finally triumph, Gazgul at last committed his forces to open battle. However, the Greenskins were able to turn the tables. Golgotha was a trap. The moment Gazgul and his Goths engaged Yarik from the front, a second lesser wog of orcs hit the humans from behind. Their long-awaited trap sprung at just the right moment. A space hulk also emerged from behind Golgotha's moon, driving off the Imperial Navy. Gazgul and the Greenskins devastated the Imperial defenders with such ferocity that even the Commissar himself could not stand against it. Despite a ferocious defense and incredible and incredible feats of valor, the humans were exterminated to a person, and Yarik was captured by Gazgul. Yarik awoke later on the orc Space Hulk, his bionic claw and bale eye removed, his body suspended in chains above a pit. Gazgul watched, awaiting Yarik's return to full consciousness before sending him plummeting down the chute to the laughter of all other orcs present. Landing amongst the refuse of the Hulk, Yarik was forced to fend for himself against the many squigs that were scavenging amongst that bottom-feeding rubbish. However, refusing to quit, Yarik began hunting the squigs, using their massive quills to build a ladder back up the waste chute. When he finally managed to do so several days later, Yarik was surprised to find Gazgul awaiting him, as if the war boss had known all along that the human would make it out alive somehow. Gazgul then ordered Yarik thrown amongst the other human slave prisoners of the Space Hulk. Here, Yarik set about organizing a revolt with the other human slaves. Even though the human work crews were just used haphazardly by the orcs, they still managed to crudely map out a large part of the Hulk in the course of their labor. Yarik set his gaze on attacking a large structure shaped like an orc's head, believed to be a temple of the orc gods, a place where he was sure that he would find Gazgul. But the other prisoners convinced him to try to escape and warn the Imperium instead. You know, hey, run out, get reinforcements, come back and save us all. Don't don't go off your one man mission of revenge. Help us. Yarik reluctantly You in one arm are going <laughs> to kill the the biggest. Sure. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> one arm and one eye. Yarik reluctantly agreed, and one of the work gangs sabotaged a large orcish ammunition dump with Yarik and a dozen other slaves slipping away during the confusion but escape proved impossible for their intended rescue vehicle was in the process of being customized by the space hulk's mech boys leaving the humans stranded on the hulk faced with this discovery the pilot amongst the group sacrificed himself and started the altered spacecraft up anyway which resulted in another massive explosion that Yarik turned once again into a massive diversion. Left with no other choice, the remaining humans made for the Hulk's Orc Head Temple, which was actually the Space Hulk's bridge. Each member of the escapees eventually sacrificing themselves to give Yarik a chance to reach the top of the structure and his hated foe. But even then, Yarik would be denied, for when he reached the bridge, he found only mechs manning the stations, all of which he quickly qu killed. I like how he's doing all of this, too, as you just pointed out, with one arm and one eye. Yeah. Do you think, like, like he... Because he's used to having the... Well, he has a, he's used to the power claw weight. So do you think with it off, he's, like, perpetually curved, like, 45 degrees, <laughs> leaning one way? I feel like the power claw... There's no, the only way he'd be able to actually carry that is if he also had, like, spine reinforcement and some other stuff going on. Which makes sense, because he's got, you know, the other bionics. 
I don't know. I think he just does Tai Chi. It's a lot of Tai Chi. <laughs> Those hibachi balls, man. <laughs> hibachi grill? Yes. With orc reinforcements about to overrun the bridge, Yarick opted for one last desperate gamble. He activated all the systems of the Space Hulk at once in hopes of making it tear itself apart due to the stress of such uncoordinated forces. As he watched out of the bridge's eyes, Yarek saw a massive eruption devastate one side of the Space Hulk, pledging his soul to the Emperor as it raced towards his position. He, he suicided. He's like, this is it. I got it. I'm going to take you all with Fuck me. Them all. Fuck Get them all. So days later, Yarek once again regained consciousness, astonished that he was still alive and that his bionics had been returned to him while he slept. Exiting the room, he was greeted by hundreds of orcs who started to cheer him on while parting and allowing him a path through their ranks. Bewildered, the commissar followed his escort of greenskins to the closest launch bay where Gazgul waited for him in front of an intact space shuttle. Expecting some sort of final showdown, Yarek braced himself, but Gazgul merely stepped out of the way stating to Yarick that it had been a good fight and that he should go back to Armageddon and prepare for the orcs' return, for they would soon be launching yet another wag to reclaim Ar Armageddon. For as Gaz is reputed to have said, good enemies is hard to find. I, I don't know if I'm doing good work today. Can I give it? Can I give, can you I slip into Goblin a little bit. You do that, <laughs> yeah. Good enemies is hard to find. <laughs> there you go, I like it. Yeah, it works. While Yarick left the orc space hulk orbiting Golgotha in the shuttlecraft his nemesis had provided, he would soon return with a force drawn from the ranks of the Adaptus Mechanicus military forces and a massive weapon known as the Ordinatus Golgotha. We've talked about Ordinatuses in the past. Every once in a while, the Mechanicus makes a weapon or a device that only has one function. And in this case, the Ord Ordinatus Golgotha was created to retake this world. So he yeah. used all of these forces. And generally, they can't move them. Yeah, once they're deployed, they, they stay there. Because they're, like, assembled in field, and that, that's it. And they're they don't huge. Go anywhere. They're Titan scale, but, like, buildings. Single for yeah. They're like, they're, it's like a warlord titan with a single function, essentially. Yeah. They obviously didn't see the posters about reducing, reusing, and recycling. No, they, they did not wake up with Yakety Yak. Or wake up? I grow up. Grow up with Yakety Yak. Yeah. So he used all of these forces and objects to route the orcs from the world. Once again, Gazgul escaped to fight another day. Golgatha would eventually be reclaimed by the orcs soon. However, before they started the Third War of Armageddon. So Golgotha must be really close. I'm guessing it's really close to Armageddon. It's got to be. Probably like one of those like used to be a review fueling spot between like a planet hopping. Right. So the Third War of Armageddon. 50 Terran years to the day after the end of the Second War of Armageddon in 998.m41, Gazgul Mag Uruk Thraka launched his second WOG to take the Hive World from the Imperium. Yarek came out of his well-earned retirement again to lead the planet's defense, as none of the Imperium knew the deranged mind of the Orc Warlord better. He arrived on the planet two weeks before the Orc invasion began and ordered all remaining Imperial aircraft to destroy as many Orcs as possible before they could even make planet fall. Eventually, though, Orcs did begin to land their rocks, each providing them with a pre-built fortress made from the hollowed-out remains of an asteroid. The aged commissar was able to counter all but the most outlandish assault devised by the greenskin prophet. However, a cataclysmic war ensued, which stretched the military capacity of the Adaptus Ministorum to near its breaking point. While the furiosity and ingenuity of the orc warlord did not claim Armageddon, the Imperial forces were able to withstand as the Imperial forces were able to withstand the invaders. However, during all of this, the planet was transformed into a brutal, unending war zone. Eventually, Gazgul himself was drawn away by another vision, which he believed was given to him by the greenskid gods themselves again. This allowed the Imperium to push the orcs once again off of the Armageddon planet, off of Armageddon, and eventually out of the Armageddon system. But for Yarek, the war was not over, and he was unwilling to let his nemesis escape. 
Yarick petitioned High Marshal Helbrecht to join the Black Templars in their conquest to chase down and end the orc menace, Gazgul, once and for all. Helbrecht agreed, and Yarick set off with the crusade to ensure the orc warlord's reign of havoc was eventually stopped. So, Gay's orc shop is actually just fucking with us, and we're going to get a Primaris Yarick. <laughs> Shut your edition. fucking mouth with that heresy. <laughs> So, so Kev, so Kev, you got oh, a, man. You, you got another quote coming up. Oh. You baked potato but. motherfucker, get out of here! I, I hate that. Oh my god, I hate that idea. Oh <laughs> uh, no, I hate it too. It would, it would terrify. Uh, uh, <laughs> Normally, I enjoy Schadenfreude, but this is a bridge too far, my friend. So, without the tireless efforts of Commissar Yarick, Gazgul's Wog would have overrun Armageddon long ago and stormed on towards Holy Terra itself. The Commissar's crusades to slay the Beast of Armageddon continued well into the 42nd millennium. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> <laughs> so, before we jump into Commissar Yarick's war gear, uh, currently in the lore, we are left with a big question mark as to whether or not Yarick succeeded in chasing Gazgul down with the Black Templars, or if something happened to Yarick. Um... Nothing is official as of the date of right recording, <laughs> but um, there are rumors that our boy Yarek may not be surviving into 10th edition. We generally mm-hmm. try not to date ourselves, but our heroes of the in- of 40K Commissar Yarek episode might get a quick 15-minute update when we know more. <laughs> right. Like three weeks from now. <laughs> <laughs> from, from my understanding, though, um, in one of the more recent books that was released about Helbrecht, um, Gilman went to Helbrecht and said, I need you to not go for vengeance, but go for duty. That was the whole thing with right. Thorn and how you aspire to him. And then he actually called off his endless chase and went off and basically kicked a bunch of Iron Warriors' asses off the planet but there was no mention of Yark as far as I could remember in that book. So he was not there or not important enough to mention in this, in- where he was last seen in this group, in this fleet. Yeah. Well, and it's also entirely possible that Yarek joined Helbrecht and then they, you know, they, they, they definitely, the black Templars definitely met up with the orcs because a lot of the black Templar stuff we've been getting is very orc infused as, as of late. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, like yeah. whatever conflict happened that led to them splitting, we're not, we don't know yet. Yarick is still an active part of lore. Um, his, his story might be coming to an end, but he's still an active part of the lore. It just hasn't ended quite yet. <laughs> yeah. He's a really interesting character though. Cause I know a lot of people have picked on the fact, including myself have picked on the fact that like, he's ridiculously old, um, you know, between the first war of Armageddon and the second war of Armageddon is 50 years. So if he was 75, let's say at the end of the first war of Armageddon, he is now, you know, 135 ish. And sure with like, um, regenerative treatments and bionics and stuff like that, he's probably going to live much longer, but how much does that actually buy you? And I, and I guess, like, there's Inquisitors that are, like, three to four hundred years old, so... So, uh, my Rogue Trader right. party that I bought, the Kill Team, uh, right. in her lore for Lucia Vane, she's, like, somewhere between seven and nine hundred and kills anybody who find out her actual age. Yeah. Her personal Medicaid is also a rejuve tech. Right, right. <laughs> so, like, with the proper... treatment, Like, the technology exists. Like, it's not that the technology doesn't exist. But the way the six million that, throne commissar. But the way that right. the yeah right. But the way that the technology, the rejuve technology, is described too, is it doesn't reverse aging. It it halts aging. No, it halts aging. So he yeah. he doesn't get older. So, so he's yeah. like, he's like that really. I don't know if you guys have. I, there's there's like um I can't remember his name, but he's like an incredibly ripped like grandpa. That's oh, Yarek. Yeah. Yarek yeah. is just the incredibly ripped Both grandpa. grandpa. Yeah. Which one? The one that did all the weightlifting or the one that made himself immune to Cobra Venom to get more anti-venom? The one that did a bunch of weightlifting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not Cobra Kai crazy man. 
<laughs> not Cobra Kai. There was a dude who legitimately. I know. I, um, I, I, that's what I call him, Cobra Kai Crazy Man. <laughs> man, that's insane, just, dude. Yeah, he was on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Oh, 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 oh! I know exactly who you're talking about now. Or, or like those guys that the, the like um, the dudes that can lay on the beds of nails and then get walked on. Yeah, I remember yeah. watching the one with the dude who was trying to become a cat. He's dead now. <laughs> oh, the cat guy died. Yeah, I think there's only so much weird shit you can pump into your body before your body I mean, goes. That dude, yeah, but that dude had full body tats, cheek implants, hair implants on his face for whiskers, yeah. teeth, like dental work done. Like dude had gone all Older. the way. He dude looked it. like a feeling it. <laughs> all right, so on to Commissar Yarick's war gear. Yarick wears the typical uniform of an Imperial Commissar, including the ubiquitous black great coat and a peaked cap. However, and this answers one of your questions, I think, Kevin, under this, the elderly commissar wears a suit of carapace armor with a small built-in fusion reactor that provides power needed for his many other pieces of war gear and bionics. His armor also has a special built-in conversion field which shrugs off almost all attacks. So he is wearing... Like of probably a uh, cut down version, but uh, of like power armor or or the undersuit that you wear under power armor, essentially. A black carapace. Well, it's, it's not it's, quite a well, black carapace. Well, carapace armor is um, carapace armor is the same armor that well, same level of armor protection that Tempest Scions wear. Right, but they don't have a built in fusion reactor and a bunch of like power. No, things. no, he's they got didn't extra behead stuff. a fucking orc one armed. Right. I mean. They probably could though. <laughs> but um yeah, it's so it's the same chest plate, essentially. Yeah. But he's got extra nonsense on his back. Which I always figured that it doesn't ever say that carapace armor well it actually specifies carapace armor is unpowered. So I'm surprised it doesn't say that his is a powered, you know, to support the weight of the claw or something, you never know. I would just imagine that if it's got a built in fusion reactor, it's probably next level, but yeah, it's probably got something. And it's got the uh, conversion they, field, so it's got to have where, gyro compensator field and nonsense. Yeah. Where it says highly volatile and experimental got filed off before it was given to him, though, just in case. <laughs> the other thing that I guess we don't necessarily know is maybe Talos 3 is like Katachan, and the only people who survive past a certain age are just ridiculously buff. Yeah. So f- I mean, he basically did have a Katachan style upbringing growing up feasting on Gretchen's in the sewers, you know? Right. So foremost among his other power items or foremost among his other pieces of war gear. And the most renowned is his trademark item, the power claw, which he claimed from warlord. That was a crisp slap. That was, (laughs) I was trying to keep going, but now I have to restart. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Slanesh approves. <laughs> <laughs> Foremost among these, and the most renowned of, and most re- wow, I am really bad at writing sentences sometimes. <laughs> and then reading. <laughs> Foremost among these items, and the most renowned is his trademark, the power claw he claimed from the warlord Ulacard's corpse during the Second War of Armageddon, which replaced the arm that he had lost in the same combat. Despite its typical crude orcish appearance, the weapon has been restored and blessed by both the priests of the Adeptus Ministorum and the tech priests of the Adaptum Mechanicus. It's powerful enough to kill anything foolish enough to stand before Yarick in one swipe. Except sudden off-death screen murders. Right? But that's because the the writers don't fear the claw. I love the old one, the by claw. the way. The old one is so oh. dope where it's like a it's a power fist with the pincher. For the lobster claw? Yeah. yeah. So Looks like fucking, fucking crazy Mr. Krabs. Looking. Yeah. <laughs> this is also a great picture. Are you two friends? <laughs> Yarek, no. Gazgul, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Yar- it's a Yarek's... It's relationship. Oh, right. That was such a great episode of Star Trek. I know it's off topic, but that was a good... <laughs> that was a good one. I like that. As much shit as people give Trek, I like Trek also. We just shit on new track is all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yarek's bionic eye implant is the bale eye. 
tuned to play on the orcish superstition that he possessed an evil eye and could kill with just a glance. It produces a laser beam in combat at Yarrick's mental direction, powerful enough to core out an opponent's skull at 10 paces. Did you work but that in? Hits... Did I work it into Billy? Yeah. I uh, just, he, he had fought. I like, think does he have a bail would... eye or does he have like something that replaces it? Oh, his it? model has it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, his model has a has a, a fucked up eye and then there's a little bit of a silver we- that you can see. It kind of looks like a, eye. It looks like a Terminator eye. It's like more subtle. Mechanicum laser pointer. Yeah. It's such a crazy eye. Like, I didn't that I honestly like I knew all the bail eye stuff and all of that, but I had just thought it was because his eye was red and orcs are weird. I didn't realize that he had actually turned it into a fucking weapon. Yeah, it's a straight. It's I it's wish a it was better. Pistol. <laughs> well, it should be stronger, honestly. But and that was always the problem is it hits like a las pistol on the tabletop. It's literally it's strength three. They just des- they describe it as having the power of a las pistol and is like war gear. Yeah, I mean, it's, but at it's the same only, time, like him it's only, using it is yeah. always more it's way more effective that it's more like a hot shot last pistol it's effective because he hits on twos not fours. right right and he's doing yeah. it in close combat i mean it, it's true. another attack in close combat but we're not supposed yeah. to talk about tabletop <laughs> yeah, marky well, I mean, would be yelling at marky is yelling at us wherever he is <laughs> but well, well you know, no he's he probably yelling at his child and get in the call <laughs> yeah maybe he shouldn't just be a sick bitch <laughs> tell Nurgle to go fuck himself. Hey, we I haven't he played corn. We <laughs> haven't talked shit about the two people missing yet. <laughs> yeah. No, I talked shit about Tom. That's true. You did talk shit about Beast. That's true. Yark's eye is pretty cool, though. Yeah, Nonetheless, it is pretty it's dope. cool. It kind of sucks that it's not super good on tabletop, but that's that's pretty core for something really cool in lore. It doesn't work that well. <laughs> Well, because that's it, like most of the relics for Space Marine chapters. Like, like in lore, it's cool because in lore you can use it in interesting and unsuspecting ways. Right. Like, he's in a melee fight. He can block, you know, with his claw, and while the other dudes like, ah, oh, try to get his block to break, he's just like, oh yeah, pew pew, fucking pow right just, in the face. Just winks at you. Yeah, he just wink. wink. He winks with his good eye, and then winks with his bad eye. <laughs> um, com- Commissar, I don't know if um, uh, I'm getting written up for flirtation with an uh, inferior officer. Why? Well, you're winking. I'm blinking. No, you're <laughs> winking. <laughs> don't you want somebody so bad they wink with both eyes? Um, I believe that's called brain damage. <laughs> While most commissars choose to wield only a bolt pistol as a sidearm, Yarrick opts for a mastercrafted Laz pistol, also holding a Godwin Diaz pattern storm bolter as an additional firearm. He wields the huge Astartes weapon one-handed as easily as a lesser man might wield a Laz pistol. So there's definitely something going on with his just base physiology because in his left hand, he wields a full-on storm bolter. Right, like he's. And it's got... not a Terminator Bolt Storm Bolter. It's a normal Storm Bolter, but still. Yeah, it's almost like his. I'm surprised his, uh, that it's a uh... worship. Ooh, good point. Yeah the 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 orc conspiracy the wagon. No, 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 no. That his say, faith in the emperor is powering him. He gave his soul. He, in the in the in uh, the passage yeah. of it, he gave his soul to the emperor and then passed out. Right. That speaks demigod to me. Mm, so he's like a saint, a living saint. That just yeah, hasn't been the, named. Uh, minus as the a, warp oh. entity stuff. But that's oh. why he inspires everyone, and he hasn't oh. killed yeah. anyone under his command. That would make oh. sense that he's he was essentially a living saint. And I oh. can see that's where they're going with him. Maybe he's not dead. Oh. But don't say. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we're getting a living saint. Oh. <laughs> I want a Katan Yarrick. Fuck the Primaris Yarrick. Give me Katan Yarrick. A Katan Yarrick. Katan Yarrick. Shard of the Yarrick. <laughs> sh- shot, uh, sh- shard of the Bail Eye. All right. Shard of the Bail Eye. <laughs> and the one that everybody has been waiting for. When yeah. the battlefield requires him to move forward, not on foot, Yarrick can count on his personal Bane Blade, Super Heavy Tank, the Fortress of Arrogance. This mobile headquarters also serves as a motivational platform. 
Blessed by the priests of the Ministorum and the Mechanicus, the Bane Blade has been specifically modified to allow Yarick to motivate his troops from atop the main turret, clearly in sight of everyone, yet remaining well protected by a special force field. The Fortress of Arrogance is almost as renowned as its passenger, as many consider the tank just as blessed by the Emperor as Yarick. And that goes back to that blessed thing. Mm -hmm. And to add on to that, when I was reading about this in that force field and him being on top of it, I immediately thought, the writers at Games Workshop, Black Library, whomever, decided they wanted to put the Pope Mobile on a tank. <laughs> on a tank. <laughs> yeah. And this is what it is. It's literally, it's literally right. the Pope Mobile during wartime. Well, I, I mean, it makes sense because the Imperium is essentially space Holy Roman Empire. Right. And what is the descendant of the Holy Roman Empire but the church? It's funny because the Holy Roman Empire was neither very holy nor Roman. I know, right? That's eh. why I, <laughs> what do you when mean? I was a kid, it was that holy. blew my mind. It didn't make any... I was like, this doesn't... What? I, it was I don't understand. <laughs> it was... It, what, are, what are you talking about? It's holy... Like wheat thins, holy, a Roman holy Empire. Roman Come Empire. on, it's holy, holy the Roman Empire. <laughs> it, it's holy, as in in, in its entirety, <laughs> modeled after the Roman Empire. Got it. I don't know, man. Holy. Sometimes they call it Istanbul. Sometimes they call it Constantinople. Why but is I get Istanbul? Confused. Well, Istanbul Not got the works. <laughs> Nobody's business but the Turks. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Not, and you know things. what? I'm sick and tired of changing my passports every time I go to visit. <laughs> <laughs> to further go on with what you guys were just talking about, Sebastian Yarek's most potent weapon is not any weapon or mechanical contraption, nor even his mighty vehicle, but his own iron will, which allows him to shrug off and ignore the consequences of wounds that would disable most other beings. This undaunted resolve, this undaunted resolve to fight and win in the name of the mankind and the emperor, coupled with his personal charisma and oratory prowess, has made him one of the most renowned and beloved leaders in the history of the Imperial Guard. Imperial soldiers see it as an immense honor to have served under the venerable commissar. It is said that Yarek has never had to execute an officer serving alongside him for cowardice. So great is his motivational presence. Even commanders of the Adaptus Astartes have deferred to his authority, although this might just be rumors spread amongst the rank and file to bolster their morale. Nah, totally fact. <laughs> right? So that Everybody wraps... can pimp slap them if they talk back? Yeah. R right? He can lift their weapon, I have a feeling. <laughs> He's got a power claw, and he can lift one of their heavier weapons. <laughs> without, just... without power the, armor. <laughs> the, the scene in... Uh... Um, what should we call it? Hammer and Bolter. No, it's in um, it's in Hell's Reach, but it's not in the in the movie one that ended up on YouTube. It's in the in that like just the actual story. Right. But the one of the Space Marines tries to give him lip, and, and he just looks other, at him. <laughs> well, he doesn't do anything besides stop talking. He just he just stops talking and looks at the guy and one of the other Space Marines in the room looks at the other space marine <laughs> like just sh the shut up the fuck you just do <laughs> just just you? shut up don't the make him get mad <laughs> don't the fuck you trying we gonna yeah. die like like listen man i may agree with you but i'm not affiliated with you for the next five minutes <laughs> exactly <laughs> and and it's just to see that that other it's like he doesn't even have to stand up for himself that other space marines will put their own, you know, other space marines in line for him. Like he yeah. doesn't have to say. He doesn't even have to be like, "Do you know who I am?" He just he just lets other people. Do you know who he is? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bunch. That's of, like that's another level, you know. Yeah. There's a bunch of fiction written about Yarek, and we definitely didn't cover everything, um, but that does wrap it up for our coverage of Commissar Sebastian Yarek. And this is our first episode where we've tried out this format. What do you guys think? Who are you looking forward to hearing about next? You can keep connected with us in a bunch of different ways. One is to reach out to us by email at underthehiveofmadness at gmail.com or jimdarkgaming at gmail.com. Or you can always head on over to Discord and join our growing community. Not only can you talk with us about lore, hobby, and tactics of Warhammer 40k, 
but you can get involved on topics spanning from Warhammer Age of Sigmar to video games mm. and even role-playing games and other stuff. Yeah, there's always somebody on here. Well, at least one of us is here active, ready to respond to stuff. So if you got questions, questions about building stuff, questions about painting stuff, questions about whatever, we <laughs> here. Know, throw it, throw it in, throw it in the relevant channel so that we, at least we can stay organized. Because you know we got a lot of channels to because <laughs> we talk about a lot of things. Yeah, it's ick. All, man. Yeah, ick. I mean, no. I mean, yeah, ick. I love it. I love it. Speaking of yeah, ick. <laughs> if you want to hear more of my voice. I have my own YouTube channel, Objective Insecure, and we now have a Twitter. It is the fake obsec insec at fake obsec insec. Somehow we don't have the proper terms. But yeah, yeah it was it was so weird that you are the like when I saw it pop up, I'm like, is this actually him? <laughs> well, because yeah. normally it's people, it's at the real whatever, right? Or at yeah. real whatever, and so it's. It's funny that it's at fake. <laughs> but yeah, we're mainly active for our YouTube channel. Have a video coming out at the end of the week about what is your community and what is in your community. And frankly, after this amazing, amazing little bit, I think I want Yark in my community. How about you guys? No doubt, right? You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or find us at www.underthehiveofmadness.com. Just, I wonder if he's a good cook. Oh, I bet. I mean, he's good he at everything else. He knows how to deal else. with mushrooms. He's like, he doesn't even need the wild boar. He knows the, where to find <laughs> the wild mushrooms. That's right. You talking about Yar? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and Nicolas Cage in the movie Pig. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Yar is probably at least a half decent cook. He's He'd always, be a great designated driver. Always chopping up the vegetables. Vegetables. That was a, that, that was an do orc you, joke. Do you think orcs that, are space potatoes? Well, they're space fungus. But I like space potato. I mean, you're right, but I like space potato better. Although, <laughs> did you know that fungus is actually closer to us than it is to vegetables? Genetically speaking, Pretty sus. What? Yeah, apparently. So the like three things happened when life got created billions and billions and billions of years ago. And life split into two groups. One became plants. One became later animals and fungus. Interesting. Yeah. So, fun fun fact: <laughs> animals and fungus share the same common ancestor that is different than the one that plants shared, because that was previous to everything else. I watch a lot of science Who's channels. To say? <laughs> well, well, to get more interesting facts like that, and also more forty k lore. Help the podcast grow by liking and reviewing us wherever you get your podcast fix. Our home is Spotify and Anchor FM, but you can also find us on Apple, Google, Stitcher, and many, many more. If there is one that you prefer that I didn't list off, hit us up somehow, and I will try to get us listed there as soon as possible. You can also find us on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash under the hive of madness. All Patreon members get access to a video webcast with minimal editing. So you can see our beautiful faces and hear all of our amazing bloopers and blunders. All Patreon levels also get access to our quarterly painting contest. Plus, we have perks at higher levels. So go on over and check all of that out. If you guys are wondering at any of the spellings of anything that we've mentioned, including Ikbard's channels, all of the spellings will be down in the show notes to make it easier for you. Mama Kaz's Noodle House voted best damn noodles this side of the Eye of Terror. 13 years running. Try the new spicy Glider Gators sausage ramen before any Glider Gators decide to chew on you. Like the butt of a Laz rifle careening out of the murk of the sump, smashing your senses and sense of good taste while we're at it, right out the back of your head. We are the pioneers of Sonic Mayhem and Rebellion 665.66 UHMR Chemrat Radio. Reminding all of you Chemrats, Hive Mice, and Sump Ghoulies to keep those dials fixed. Right here, same ratty frequency for the same ratty-ass attitude. Consume Red Squig. <laughs> You're not pushing water this time? Hey man, I, I'm diversifying my portfolio. They say, never be afraid of your own shadow, for it alone lacks four arms. 
but there be there a forearm shadow behind it, that is another matter altogether. Some scary shit, motherfucker. motherfucker. How do you declare? You know what we need to remind everybody? Read a book. Oh yeah, and if you haven't, read a fucking book. <laughs>